by a number of announcements. It's not enough to say it's coming up. You, every now and then you gotta keep saying it's coming up. Today is Sunday. Today precedes some coming events that are coming up. We can look from today to what's called Good Friday, which was for the kingdom of God, a dark Friday. But on that Friday, Christ dies. Then there's Saturday of their mourning and groaning. The disciples in fear for their own lives hid themselves in the upper room except for Peter. Historians give us two ways to look at Peter's activity one, I think, came up in the church school lesson. Peter is undecided just who Jesus is. He has seen him turn water to wine. His experience is feeding 5,000 with just two fish, a few loaves of bread. But his mind is boggled by Jesus saying to him, I must go up to Jerusalem and there lay down my life. Peter is so bothered by that statement. How can a man with such tremendous power be killed? I saw him. Strike that. I heard after Lazarus died, they sent for Jesus. I heard that when he got there, he simply said to the lady in the house, Show me where he lay. Are you listening? That's drama. He does not come in crying and weeping as they are doing. He simply says, show me where he lives. And Mary looks at him in rather astounding confusion. What do you mean show you where he lives? He's been dead four days. I sent for you. And you just showing up? And again, the master says, show me where he lives. Now, that seems to me to say one or two things to us about our master. He permits us to fuss with him. <laughs> he could have said to Mary, shut up. Have you forgotten who I am? But he does not do that. He listens to her argument. If you had been here. Are you, are you listening? Anybody been there? You had troubles. And you knew if the Lord had been here. He could have taken care of this. So let's strike if. And put in sense. Not S E N S E, but S I N C E. Not if you were here, but since you are here. Do something about my situation. I know you got the power. Do something. 
And then she turns to her sister and says, what you doing? Get up and help me argue with the master. And Jesus says, you, you shut up. She's doing the good thing. Now what does that say? There are times in the midst of our trying situations, we ought to just go on about our business and let him handle the problem. Now, if you had that, I could sit down, we could go home. I've got a situation, and I can't talk to you about it, but I'll just say I've got it. So I'm not sure what I need to do about it because physically I, I'm not able to handle it. I've said it to two or three of my friends, or one or two of my friends, only to discover they've got troubles too. Anybody been there? But thank God there is one. <laughs> who takes all of our troubles, yeah, 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 yeah. isolates them, and tends to yours. Yeah. Isn't that marvelous? Yeah. Uh, some of you, as I look about without calling your name, if I called you about my trouble, you'd think I was crazy. Don't you know I got trouble too? Yeah. Does that sound like you? Yeah. Is this Michael? Does that sound like you? Yeah. What you calling me for? You just took it off from me last Sunday. All of us got trouble. Yeah. Well, that's true. But there's a greater truth beyond that. Jesus, who takes all of our troubles, isolates them and chooses to help you. Are you worth it? No. And yet God in his steadfast love chooses, decides to help me. Now, back to my opening statement. Significant events or with rare exceptions, often preceded by several announcements. Amen. Such occurrences, due to their often momentous ability to capture attention, are often described as arresting. Any notice of such news prior to its appearance is listed under the caption, Coming Events. Coming events. Now, I want to talk about three hours <laughs> about coming events. <laughs> well, it strikes four hours. How about that? <laughs> so, just all day, we ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> coming events. Most of you, if not all of you, are in some manner looking forward to Easter. I need you to talk back to me. Let's preach both pulpit and pew. Most of us, if not all of us, are looking forward to Easter. If this was a church full of children, who appreciated what I said, they'd say amen. Because they're looking forward to Easter. It means new dresses, new pants and coats, new shoes. But we, since we got all that, we just sit there. But some of us, thank God, I'm one of them. I'll trust you, one of them. I'm looking forward to Easter. Not just to the day, but what the day means. Listen. He is not here. 
He is risen. Hallelujah. He's not here. I know you heard what happened. Lazarus died. But they sent for Jesus. And he got him up. But since then they took Jesus. And crucified him. And early that Sunday morning, help me with this, an angelic committee from glory is standing in the corners of that garden. And there lying before them is an empty tomb. Can you see that? Angels confronted with an empty tomb. All right, all right. And along comes, listen, brethren, along comes some women. Where were the men? Hiding. Scared the ear necks. But some women who love Jesus. I'm a man. God knows I am. But I wouldn't pastor any church that didn't have some women. <laughs> Brother Yorker said many of us. Somehow God has given women a sensitivity. Not just to pain, but what the pain means. Forgive me, but I don't know other way to say this. I thank God I can't be pregnant. One, I wouldn't like the way I look. <laughs> but there's something God gave to women who are actually proud providing that baby is certified. And so a pregnant woman who was pregnant by her husband, her husband, her husband, one who has said whether he meant it or not, till death do us part. Walks proudly. Even though she looks to us funny. But she walks proudly, carrying within her the offspring of the man she loves. Oh, glory. What Mary must have felt carrying the baby Jesus in her womb. Because the gossipers in Jerusalem talked about her. Mary, pregnant, she ain't even married. She's just a child. But God touched Joseph. Marry that girl. Uh, God help me, uh, that couldn't have been me. And if you men be honest, that couldn't be you either. I'm going to marry a woman who's pregnant and I know I haven't touched her. I hope your silence means you're thinking about that. God requires of us to believe when there's nothing really to believe about. <laughs> it's significant to see a woman pregnant 
she carried within her womb a living entity. I was arguing myself last night in preparation for today's message and I almost got lost because I see how easy it is to become an atheist. Are you listening to me? It takes something to believe, to believe. That woman who was pregnant, God told me to marry her? What do you think, I'm a fool? And so the atheist says, number one, how can she be pregnant without a man? You talking about God, what, what God? For a woman to be pregnant, a man has to impregnate the woman. A man, a human being. Yeah. What's this foolishness about God? All right, all right. And so many of us here this morning believe Jesus has saved us, but we don't yet know who he is. Yeah, that, that should shake you up. I thank God. I gave my life to Christ many, many years ago, but at the time I didn't really know who he was. I did it because mama says you ought to join the church. Anybody been there? You ought to join the church. Now mama meant right because that's all she knew. But the truth of the matter is you can't join the church. You got to be born in it. Well, how can that be? I'm a human being. I've already been born. Now, how am I going to be born in the church? Well, that's the mystery of godliness. Once you believe, matter of fact, just before you believe, and while you're believing, the Holy Spirit. Enters into your being and blows up your mind to where you can actually feel the power of God saying, Believe. And the moment you believe, the physicians in glory lay you on the table. And bring forth that new baby. <laughs> and in that process, the old you passes away. And the new you comes forth. You have now been born again. Oh, hallelujah. I'm on holy ground. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Such is the mystery of godliness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is there a man here I can trust? You? No, I'm not trying to hurt you. Show me your hand. I'm going to say something to you, but we ought to know I'm not trying to hurt you. But I need somebody who's man enough to say, here, my. All right. There's one. The Almighty slow. How do you, man, really know that's your child? Some of you have been there. Do you know it because she said so? Well, that's the same she you saw with John last week. And Jeff the week before. How do you know she's carrying your child? Um, brother, you might as well say amen. You got to go home and eat, so you might as well get some. <laughs> All of us, in some instance, live by faith. And that ought to help you. 
I've got two children. It was three. But my son has passed on. Well, it lives now, Deborah and Brenda. Deborah is mine by my marriage to her mother. And I adopted her as mine because I'm going to take care of her. So she's my child. And there's Brenda, who is by birth my child. Now there is an Isidore who belonged to God by adoption, by birth. The trouble with that, Mr. Doe, he's sinful. He is entirely separated from God. But along comes the Holy Spirit. Lays me on the operating table. Creates within me newness. And out comes the new Isidore who has been born again. Now if you don't understand that, I don't either. But that's how God operates. All I know here I am. And I know I've been changed. Anybody here know you've been changed? I'm no longer what I used to be. I'm not but thank God I am who I am in Jesus Christ. And so I look forward to coming events. I'm really through. Today is Sunday. It's called Palm Sunday. That's an earthly connotation about the Sunday before Easter in the Bible. They came bearing palm, signifying newness, looking forward, well, signifying growth, looking forward to newness. And Jesus is coming to Jerusalem. But he's not talking about growth. He's talking about death. I must need go into Jerusalem and lay down my life. Now that's the way he said it. They said it another way. Is not this Mary's baby? Can on all this foolishness crucify him? And they took him bound his hands, stuck a spear in his side, and hung him on a cross. Interestingly enough, for some reason, the Bible says, and they hung him between two thieves. Can I get two thieves? <laughs> I ought to be either. All, all, that, that's all of you. <laughs> Without Christ, yes, yes. you're one of those thieves. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say that again. Without Jesus in your life, you are but a thief. Yeah. Worthy of death. But God has so fixed it. You're going to die. One of you on this cross. Another one on this cross. 
but you only come Jesus. <laughs> and he dies on this cross between the two of you. Which means you are no closer to him than I am. You can't reach him any better than I can reach him. All of us have access to the throne of God. For he died to save every one of us. He died. To keep me from the ravages of hell. He died. Matthew said he died. Am I right about that? Mark said he died. Luke said he died. John said he died. I know he died. Anybody here know he died? He died. Come on. Come on. Till my soul was satisfied. I've been born again. And I'm looking forward to coming events. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. I'm going home to live with God. Anybody, anybody here want to go with me? Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. I'm going home, not some graveyard. You're going to put this in the grave of my soul. It's going home to live with God. Now, if you're not too tired or too old or too crazy, if you know that, stand on your feet. Tell somebody, when I die, Wipe your weeping eyes. Yes. Lift your hand with glory. Yes. Tell them she went home yes. to be with God. Yes. I'm going home yes. to be with God. Yes. I, I, <laughs> I, I looked great the other day. Almost unbelievably, I was shaving. And pardon this, but it's, it's, it, this is old is it all. I was shaving, I looked in that mirror at my countenance. And it occurred to me, what I see doesn't look like what I am. I'm 92 years old. Soon to be 93. But in that mirror, it doesn't look like that. Amen. Take a look at yourself. What you see is not what you're going to look like. Amen. When I get to heaven. Jesus. I'm going to look just like him. I'm not talking about hair like lamb would, but I'm going to look just like him in terms of my visionary experience. My soul is anchored in him. I walk like him. I talk like him. I wave my hands like him. When I see Jesus, the man who set me free, who died on Calvary, but early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Yeah,
Thank you. 